part of what I see happening is that like I think that women whose relationship with men have, has been seriously pathologized cannot distinguish between male authority and competence and male tyrannical power. Like they fail to differentiate because all they see is the oppressive male. And, and they may have had experiences that, that um, their experiences with men might have been rough enough so that that differentiation never occurred because it, it has to occur. And you have to have a lot of experience with men and good men too before that will occur. But it seems to me that we're also increasingly dominated by a view of masculinity that's mostly characteristic of women who have terrible personality disorders and who are unable to have healthy relationships with men. Now, but here's the problem. You know, this is something my wife has pointed out too. She said, well, men are gonna have to stand up for themselves, but here's the problem. I know how to stand up to a man who's, who's uh, unfairly trespassing against me. And the reason I know that is because the parameters for my resistance are quite well defined, which is we talk, we argue, we push, and then it becomes physical, right? Like if, if we move beyond the boundaries of civil discourse, we know what the next step is. Okay, that's forbidden in, in discourse with women. And so I don't think that men can control crazy women. I don't think, I really don't believe it. I think that they have to throw their hands up in, 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 in what, in, in, it's not even disbelief. It's that the cultural, there's no step forward that you can take under those circumstances because if the man is offensive enough and crazy enough, the, the re reaction becomes physical right away or at least the threat is there. And when men are talking to each other in any serious manner, that underlying threat of physicality is always there, especially if it's a real conversation and keeps the thing civilized to some degree. You know, if you're talking to a man who wouldn't fight with you under any circumstances whatsoever, then you're talking to someone to whom you have absolutely no respect. But I can't see any way. For example, there's a, there's a woman in, in Toronto who's been uh, organizing this movement, let's say, against me and some other people who are gonna do a free speech uh, um, event, and she managed to organize quite effectively. And she's quite um, offensive, you might say. She compared us to Nazis, for example, which, you know, publicly, using the swastika, which wasn't really something I was all that fond of. But I, I'm defenseless against that kind of female insanity because the techniques that I would use against a man who was employing those tactics are forbidden to me. So I don't know, like, it seems to me that it isn't men that have to stand up and say enough of this, even though that is what they should do. It seems to me that it's sane women who have to stand up against their crazy sisters and say, look, enough of that, enough man-hating, enough pathology, enough bringing disgrace on us as a, as a gender. But the problem there, and, and then I'll stop my little tirade, is that most of the women I know who are sane are busy doing sane things, right? They're off, they have their career, they have their family, they're quite occupied, and they don't seem to have the time or maybe even the interest to go after their, their crazy harpy sisters. And so I don't see any regulating force for that, that terrible femininity. And it seems to me to be invading the culture and undermining the, the masculine power of the culture in a way that's, I think, fatal. I really do believe that. I, I, too, I too believe that these are, these are symptomatic of the decline of Western culture and it, we, and, and it will just go down flat. I don't think people realize that you know, the, the masculinity still exists okay, in the world as a code among jihadists. Okay? And, yes. and when you have passionate masculinity okay, circling the borders like the Huns and the Vandals during the Roman Empire, that, that's what I see. I see this culture rotting from within okay, and, and disemboweling itself, literally. Now, I have an overview of, of why we're having these problems. Right? And it, it comes from the fact that I'm the product of an immigrant family. All four of my grandparents and my mother were born in, in Italy. So I remember from my earliest years in this factory town in upstate New York where the, my, my relatives came to work in the shoe factory, I can remember still, okay, the, the life of the agrarian era, okay, which were not, which was for most of human history, okay, uh, the agrarian era, where there was the world of men and the world of women, and the sexes had very little to do with each other. Each had power and status in its own realm. 
right? And, and, they, and they laughed at each other, in, in essence, okay? Yeah. The, the women had enormous power. In fact, the old women ruled, not the young, beautiful women like today, okay? But the, the, the older you were, the more you had control over everyone, including the mating and marriage. Um, you, they, there were no doctors, so, the, the, so you had the, you know, the, the old women were like midwives and knew all the ins and outs of this inherited knowledge about pregnancy and all, all these other things, right? I can remember this, this and, and the joy that women had with each other all day long, okay? Cooking with each other, you know, being, a, a companions to each other, talking, conversing. My mother remembered as a small child in Italy, when it was time to do the laundry, they would take the laundry up the mount, up the hill to the fountain. Il Sorgo, okay, and, and do it by hand. They would sing, they would picnic, and so on, all right? And we, we get a glimpse of that in the Odyssey when Odysseus is, is, is thrown up naked on the shores of Phaeacia, all right? And, and he hears the, the sound of, of, of women, young women laughing and singing, and it's Nausicaa, the princess, bringing the women to do the laundry. Okay, it's exactly the same thing, right? So there was a, each, each gender had its own hierarchy, its own values, its own way of talking, and the sexes rarely intersected. Like I can remember in my in childhood on a holiday typical it could be a Christmas it could be a Thanksgiving whatever all after the women would be cooking all day long everyone would sit down to eat okay and then after that okay the women would retire en masse to the kitchen and the men would go I would I would look at the window and see all the men the men would be all outside usually gather on the car okay at a time when cars didn't work as well as they do today with the hood up Okay, and the men would be standing with their hands on their hips like that, everyone staring at the engine. Okay, and I went, yeah, that's how I learned, okay? Men were re refreshing themselves by studying something technical and mechanical after being with the women, okay, you know, for during the dinner, okay, and so on. So, uh, so all of these problems of today are the direct consequence of women's emancipation and freedom from the housework thanks to capitalism, okay, which made it possible for women to have jobs outside the home for the very first time in the 19th century, no longer to be dependent on, on husband or father or brother, right? And so this great, great, Thing that's happened to us that allowing us to be totally self, you know, self-supporting independent agents has produced all this animosity about between men and women because the women women feel unhappy women today wherever i go whether it's italy or brazil or england or america okay or toronto okay the the the, uh, the upper middle class professional women are unhappy miserable they want and they don't know what why they're unhappy they want to blame it on men okay but men must change men they must become more like women. No, that is the wrong way to go, okay? So when men are men, okay, and understand themselves as men, are secure as men, then you're going to be happier. Yeah, but, well, there's but, nothing more dangerous than a weak man. Yeah, absolutely, okay? And especially all these quizzlings, okay, spouting feminist yeah, rhetoric when okay. I hear that, okay, I mean, it makes me sick. But here's the point, men and women have never work side by side, ever. Maybe on the farms, okay, when you were like, maybe one person's in the potato field, the other one's over here in the toma doing tomatoes or whatever, okay? You, 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 had, you had families working, working side by side, exhausted with each other, no time to have a, any clash of this. It was a co collaborative effort on, on farms and so on. Never in all of human history have men and women been working side by side. And women are now the pressure about Silicon Valley. They're also sexist. Oh, they're, they're, they don't allow women in and so on. The Men are being men in Silicon Valley, all right, and so on. And the Especially women, the engineers. And, and the women are demanding that, you're, oh, this is terrible, you're being sexist. Maybe the sexes, okay, have their own particular form of rhetoric, their own particular form of, you know, of identity, okay? Maybe, okay, we need to re-examine, re, re okay, this business about, you know, they, they, maybe we have to perhaps accept some degree of tension and conflict between the sexes, okay, in, in a work environment. I don't mean harassment. I'm talking, I'm talking about women feeling disrespected how somehow they, with their opinions when they express them, okay, are not taken seriously. Or, or, the, the, or, or even Hillary Clinton is complaining. Oh, when a mm -hmm. woman, woman writes something online, she's attacked immediately and so on. Well, everyone's attacked online. What are you talking about? The world is tough. The world is competitive, okay? Identity is honed, okay, by conflict. The idea that there should be no conflict, that we have to be in this bath, okay, of approbation. Yes. And, and, you know, it, 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 which is, which is, well, just, that's it, the it, devouring it's mother. That's right. It's absolutely infantile. I mean, okay, so a couple of things there. Well, the first thing is, is that 
the, the agreeableness trait that divides men and women most. There's three things that divide women and men most particularly from the psychometric perspective. One is that women are more agreeable than men. And so that seems to be the primary maternal dimension as far as I can tell. It's associated with um, a desire to avoid conflict, but it's, it's associated with interpersonal closeness, compassion, politeness. Women are reliably higher than men, especially in the Scandinavian countries and, and in the countries where egalitarianism has progressed the farthest. So that's where the, the difference is maximized, which is one of the things James Damore pointed out quite correctly in his infamous Google memo. Okay, women are higher in negative emotion, so that's anxiety and emotional pain. That, that difference is approximately the same size. And again, that maximizes in egalitarian societies, which is extremely interesting. And then... Guys, as I said, right now we're entering a massive recession. Don't forget that you can actually turn to CryptoMoney.Academy, links in the description of the video, and start learning about cryptocurrency, investing in cryptocurrency, so that you can be on the forefront, so that you can actually make money when the economy is beginning to experience its ma major downturn and you will be able, and people are putting their money into crypto as they're pulling it out of fiat that is becoming much more questionable and head over to cryptomoney.academy and find courses on pretty much everything related to crypto that's going to help you to become an amazing investor we've got classes on mastering crap coins we have icos and how to make massive profit with them. We explain how the blockchain actually works. We'll teach you how to take profit perfectly because a lot of people don't know how to do that and they end up losing everything. We have a course on that's going to teach you how to uh, how to invest in all coins that are going to increase by a hundred thousand times and make you massive profit. We have the strategy you must use to become a crypto millionaire, how to convert cryptocurrencies without using an exchange, how to quickly withdraw your crypto in cash, from any ATM and, uh, and other crypto quick kind of quick, uh, that was a tongue twister. How to quickly convert your crypto into cash from any ATM and other crypto to cash quick conversion methods. We have a course on how to take, how to time the crypto market and make massive profit because there are different things that affect the crypto market and whether or not it goes up and down and, and there are specific times that you want to invest. Like right now. <laughs> We also have how to take profits from cryptocurrency and not lose your entire investment. Again, something people keep on making the same mistake on. We have how to get tons of coins for free. Basically, you get these coins before they even hit the ICOs, before they even go on sale. And as a result, you can begin selling them at much higher prices and make massive profits without with next to no investment at all. So, this course is amazing. We have Mastering the Ethereum Wallet and Blockchain. We have How to Choose and Invest in All Coins that will increase by 10 times to 1,000 times or more. We have How to Buy Bitcoins Anonymously because if you want to invest in, in all coins or crack coins and you need to learn how to buy Bitcoins and a lot of people end up spending a massive premium, you don't need to do that. We also have How to Day Trade Cryptocurrency. This is a really important course, especially for those of you that don't know what you're going to do. You know, you, you feel like, well, I, I don't know what skills I have. You can take this, put $100 in and start making money. You can make 30 bucks a day, $900 a month from like just $100, $200 investment, all right? That's what you can do with this day trading course. You can take $100 and make $900 a month, $900 a month from that $100. We have Cryptocurrency 101 for those of you that have never, you know, basically been into crypto and you're still new to it and you're like you were on the fence take this course because there's a big learning curve but i've actually worked hard to pull away the things that make it harder to understand crypto so that you can actually you can actually invest you can actually learn what crypto is and it gets you through the, the confusing aspects the biggest difference is the difference in interest between people and things and so women are more interested in people and men are more interested in things which goes along quite nicely with your car anecdote but the thing about men interacting with men, again, is that it isn't that they respect each other's viewpoints. That's not exactly right. What happens with a man, and, and I know a lot of men that I would regard as, as remarkably tough people for, for one reason or another, and everything you do with them is a form of combat. 
Like if you want your viewpoint taken seriously, often you have to yell them down and, and like they're not going to stop talking unless you start talking over them, you know, and it's, it's not like men are automatically giving respect to other men because that just doesn't happen. It's that the combat is there and it's expected. And one of the problems, and, and so this is part of the reason why I think men are bailing out of, of so much of academia and, and, and maybe the academic world in general, and maybe the world in general, is that men actually don't have any idea how to compete with women. Because the problem is, is that if you unleash yourself completely, then you're an absolute bully. And there's no doubt about that, because if men unleash themselves on other men, that can be pretty goddamn brutal, especially for the men that are really tough. And this, so that just doesn't happen with women ever. But, so you can't unleash yourself completely. If you win, you're a bully. If you lose, well, you're just bloody pathetic. So how the hell are you supposed to play a game like that? You know, so in, I've worked with lots of women in law firms in, in, in Canada, for example, and, and high achieving women, like really remarkable people, I would say. And they're often nonplussed, I would say, by the attitude of the men in the law firm because they would like to see everyone pulling together because they're all part of the same team. Whereas the men are like at each other's throats in, in, in a cooperative way because they want the law firm to succeed, but they want to be the person who's at the top of the success hierarchy, right? So, and that, that doesn't jive well with the more competitive or cooperative ethos that's part and parcel of agreeableness. And so we don't really have any idea how to integrate male and female dominance exactly. hierarchies. And exactly. That's exactly right. This is why I love this show, you know, Real Housewives, which, which is yes. which Boris Adam scorns. And just just last night, okay, I was watching one an episode, right, where the, the women were at each other, okay, at a party and all, in, in, in recounting. But I said this to you, but you said this to me, and, you're like, and the men got we got together there and said, well, this is the way they communicate, you know, with each other. And you know, said, and then, you know, men, we we men, okay, just we'll have a fist fight, and we'll, and, and ten minutes later, we're going to have a beer at the bar with, next to each other. And so, and, and I I have observed that my my entire my, my daughter life. my daughter used to be really irritated about that because she she like most people uh, was the target of feminine uh, conspiratorial bullying at one she's no pushover my daughter so this it wasn't like this was a continual thing or that she didn't know what to do about it but she had observed these girls conspiring against her and then blackening her name on on Facebook which is part of the part and parcel of the typical female bullying routine which is often reputation demolition right that there's a good yes. literature on that and then she'd watch what would happen if my brother or my son would have a, a dispute with his friends, you know, and maybe they were drinking and there was a dispute. They'd have a fight and then the next day they were friends again. And that's another thing that's strange is that like, men have a way of bringing a conflict to a head and resolving it, right? And that it isn't obvious to me that women have that same, perhaps you might call it a luxury. But it's also the case that men don't know what to do when they get into a conflict with a woman because what the hell are you supposed to do, you know? Mostly what you're supposed to do is avoid it. And, and Well, I, I've seen, um, you know, I, I don't know whether this crosses into other countries, but that there's a certain kind of taunting and teasing that men and boys do with each other that toughens them, okay, and, and where they don't, they don't take things seriously. But a girl's feelings become extremely hurt if she hears something like you know, it's very tough, you know, against, like sarcastic against her. So I, I mean, I do feel that there are profound differences between the sexes in, ter in terms of emotions, in terms of communication patterns. I, you know, my father used to say that he could never follow women's conversations. He said, he said, he said women don't even finish their finished sentences. They, that, that women n understand immediately what the other woman is saying, okay? Uh, and uh, and um, in, the, in the way that women tend to, to be more interested or have, have been traditionally more interested in soap operas, it's not just that the women were home without jobs, it's that I, honestly, Honestly, I believe that soap opera does reflect, does mirror the way women talk to each other. There's these communication patterns that have been built up through women, the world of women, okay, which, which was, it, it made sense there was a division of labor, okay, it wasn't sexism against women that there was a division of labor. The men went off to hunt and did the dangerous thing. The women stayed around the hearth because you had pregnant women, nursing women, older women, okay, they, they, they were cooking and so on. So I feel that these communication patterns that we're talking about have been built up, okay, over the centuries 
I mean, the, the men had to toughen each other, okay, to go out. To go out. You know, the hunting parties of Native Americans, you know, it would, they could be gone for two weeks and it, when, when the temperature was below zero, okay, many of them died, okay, you know, the, the idea that somehow, oh, any kind of separation of the sexes or, or different spheres of the sexes is inherently sexist. And, and, yeah, and inherently and, driven by wrong. a power dynamic. The answer to all of this, okay, that everything that you we're talking about, okay, is education into early history, okay? In, until you, until people understand the Stone Age, the nomadic period, the agrarian era, and, and, the, and how culture, how civilization built up, okay? In Mesopotamia, the great irrigation projects, where, or, in, or in Egypt, okay? Where you had, for the first a centralized government authority became necessary, okay? To master these, these you know, we had a situation where an environmentally, uh, you, know, uh, you know, difficult situation like the deserts of Mesopotamia or, or the, the peculiar character of, of Egyptian geography where you can only have a, a little tiny fertile line along the edges of the Nile, okay, an otherwise desert landscape. So the, this, this civilization and authority, okay, right, is not necessarily about power grabbing but about organization to achieve something for the good of the people as a whole. You yes, you want to see that, it. well, that's exactly the symbolism of, they, the, of they, the great by father. By reducing all hierarchy to, to power, okay, yep. and, and selfish power, okay, is, is, it is utterly naive, it's ignorant, right? So I, I say education has to be totally reconstituted, including public education, to begin in the most distant past. So, that, so our young people today, who know nothing about how the, how the world was created that they inhabit, okay, can understand, okay, what, what marvel you know, technological yes. paradise they live in, and it's the product of capitalism, it's the pro product of individual innovation, it's the pro most of it's the product of, of, of a Western tradition that everyone wants to trash now, etc. If you begin in the past and show, and also talk about war, because the war is the one thing that wakes people up, okay?